Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Interstage Window. Um, I'm Karen Terry and I have today with me as usual... The omniscient voice in the background. Uh, I promise we will get this camera thing right, except for right now I am in a, you know, a random visit with my grandmother. And as much as this lime green flooring is worth the video, uh grandmothers and wi-fi doesn't mix yeah that's not gonna work out it's not gonna work out this time so we've got voice only um but in addition to landon we have a guest with us today um our guest is eric he's back again so if you could introduce yourself to everybody who's um not heard from you yet who maybe this is the first time they're hearing of you hey guys i'm i'm eric as karen just said or as i go by mostly online pickles um i <laughs> owner and founder of the uh, of her, of an affiliate of an affiliate server so hopefully we can get some of my people here as well yeah and, and dalius I mean, <laughs> we love you guys okay <laughs> i love you guys too <laughs> sweet all right so um with all of that uh landon can you tell everybody uh, what it is we're going to talk about today and then kind of get us started and I'll get the game started too. Um, and while I'm doing that, I just want to let y'all know, since we can't see Landon today, she's going to play um, a very special character. <laughs> Landon is going to be our avatar of death. <laughs> so you guys can see that. You guys can see oh. that on the screen. Um, so that's, that's Landon here as she's appearing today. Hey, Naomi. Hey, Mochi. Okay, take it away, Landon. I just no, very quickly, I just have to talk about how wonderful a self-portrait that is. Um, <laughs> this is what this is what she looks looks like for real. Like I know y'all saw her on camera, but um, you know when uh, that's that's the makeup, right? Like y'all saw her putting on her makeup and stuff. So um, before yeah. she ever starts that, this is what she really looks like. This is my true form. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Cass, for showing up, even though you can't um, that you can't listen. You'll hear this later, I'm sure, when you watch the vods. Love you. Um, anyway, today we are going to be talking about the dun 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 dun, the end, the oh. ending of plots, the end oh. of characters, the ending of RPs. We're going to talk about all things ending and why that is not a bad thing. Yeah, I know um, endings are one of those things that uh, we don't get to experience as often in role plays, right? So I'm really excited to talk about some of my thoughts on them. Because um, even me, who's been role playing for, for, for what feels like forever, uh, I've only experienced endings a few times. So <laughs> uh, excited to talk about it. Absolutely. And it's a hard thing for, for everybody. Some people are better at it than others. For that sure. Perfect. But we are just going to talk about how best to do it, what you want to look out for, uh, if you're happy with it, if you're going to be sad, all the feelings attached, and our experience with ending. Yes. So, um, but before we do that, Karen, would you like to grant us and tell us your favorite thing of the week? Sure. Okay. So my favorite thing this week is I watched all two seasons completely <laughs> of this new show uh, that I had not discovered before called The Order. And I think I've mentioned this to a couple of you guys, but this show is amazing. It scratches that like supernatural soap opera itch that like the early seasons of vampire diaries scratched right that the early seasons of the originals scratched it's so good it definitely has like character deaths and then you know since it's a supernatural show well death is not the end so they have to go save their dead friend you know and bring them back to the land of the living and things like that um and uh and so i am just really loving it if you need that like cheesy like young adult the, all the characters like college age right they're like cheesy young adult soap opera in your life and you love uh werewolves and witches like give that show a try it's freaking amazing uh and don't worry naomi i'm not abandoning hannibal there's only two seasons of the order out i already watched it so i'm back on hannibal now and i'm watching season two of hannibal currently yeah. um i <laughs> Uh, my my wife and I actually just finished watching that not too long really? ago. Really, it's so good, right? It's so good. Yeah, I love the show. It's <laughs> it's fantastic. All right, that means I'm gonna have to get into it. If two people recommend it on the stream, that's the rule. <laughs> so you'll have to watch it, and if you and if you loved it, report back um, during another a future favorite things um, segment. <laughs> well, I, well, oh, absolutely. Give into that peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> because 
it's a it's a little those soap operas are always like a little mind numbing which yes right now i need so mm -hmm. i will i will look into it um yes well and also i'm i'm if anyone in the chat this is kind of off topic but is looking for the, i'm looking for like queen gambit reviews because i've heard that it's good but i also need to like know if i can get emotionally involved in it so just shout out to anyone who's listening let me know if you guys like that show oh i haven't tried it but netflix keeps putting it in my recommends it really thinks i'll like it but i haven't clicked it yet so, okay, well, now I challenge you to click it after you finish Hannibal. Okay. So you can tell me whether or not it's worth it. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, that's my favorite thing. Um, so do we want to... Eric, did you did you prepare a favorite thing? Well, actually, my favorite thing is going on today because as my... As I progress with my... Uh, FND and my recovery, I've actually been able to make it four days in a row for work. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. It, the first time I've been able to work four days in a row since I started my recovery, so I'm excited to start work after the stream, and I'm more than happy about that. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Good. Oh, that's a great favorite thing. Yeah. I love that. I love that for you. I know that that's, that's something um, that you've been struggling with pretty much the whole like the whole time I've known you. That's something that you've talked about. So um, that is such good news. That is such good news. I love that. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So then um, Landon, Landon, your favorite thing, right? My favorite thing. Thanks, Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing is um, I love where you're like, Eric, did you prepare favorite things in my head? <laughs> I never prepare favorite. <laughs> favorite, favorite, favorite. Um, no, I'm gonna go with my favorite thing is okay. So I haven't done it yet, and I guess we're gonna go back to TV shows. But season four of The Crown comes out tomorrow, and I am so excited. Oh, uh, it is probably one of my top five favorite shows. Um, that and it takes itself way too seriously, which I love, and um, I'm just here for it. So I'm very, very excited about that happening oh gosh i love it i love it hey thumper. hey thumper how's it going um i have not gotten into the crown but it's been recommended to me a few times you know there's just so much tv there's too much tv in the world i can't possibly watch it all but um <laughs> i've heard it's good i it is it's fantastic and the acting is wonderful also matt smith plays like prince philip and we all know that i just love matt smith's face so much of course um, i mean he's definitely a fave for you so yeah, that's a that's a good one. Um, also, I want to throw out their family should probably be my favorite thing. I'm currently with my family, so like I guess I should put that up there. Oh yeah, well probably. <laughs> you need them though, right? Yeah, um, my family is actually going to be um, coming for Thanksgiving probably. Um, that's that's the plan right now, right? There's still preparations because we're in the middle of a pandemic. But that's the plan at the yeah. moment, and. Um, and so we are definitely going to have a show next week, but the week after is probably going to be going to be a little little bit of a break. So to prepare y'all for that, well, I'll be more specific next week for sure if that's happening or not. But um, that's that's where we are right now. Oh, well, that yeah, no, definitely understand that. That's fine with me because that's my birthday. <gasps> oh, that's right. Oh my gosh. Okay, well oh, we'll have to awesome. we'll have to do something cute um for in regards to your birthday then next week. I'll think about <laughs> yeah, something. Actually, I've decided the entire month of November should be my birthday. So. I mean, that I believe in birthday months. I believe in birthday months. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, my fiance, my, I'm so used to saying fiance. It's my wife now. <laughs> my wife's birthday is on Christmas, so she just wants to celebrate all month for. Her, yeah. Wow. For her birthday. A Christmas birthday. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she loves it. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I mean, having, okay, without getting into too much, but having a birthday around the holidays is always very difficult. Um, and I understand all the people, I understand all the people who were born between, like, Thanksgiving and New Year's Day, how much that time of year can be like, oh man, everyone else is focused on everything else and not my birthday. <laughs> 
Can't relate. I'm a, I was a July baby, so. Yeah. She, <laughs> she has, she, uh, unfortunately for her, she's never been able to have a birthday party and being a Christmas baby. So yeah. I feel for her on that. So. Yeah. Always, um, always, I know a lot of my friends who uh, have been born around Christmas, always the Christmas wrapping paper instead of the happy birthday wrapping paper. Oh, yeah, that'd be um, true. Yeah. We, we are. Stuff is Christmas. Yeah, we. We we save wrapping paper, birthday wrapping paper, just for her. Cause <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's like too we, funny. That we, we privileged people who do not sorry who do not get who are not born around Christmas <laughs> don't understand is the you know the hardness that it is to be born around that time of the year. I really do feel bad for them. Landon, um, for real, real quick. I know I'm sure you're about to like uh, change subject or something. But while you're while you're doing that, can you check your your Discord sound um, settings? You sound a little bit quieter than normal. Oh yeah, I yeah. <laughs> I was streaming. I wasn't streaming, but I was playing with some other people. Jane, you're here. I think this is the first stream that you have you have come to. Um, so happy to have you here. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> <clears throat> you have not missed Welcome. anything. You have not missed anything yet. The first um, 15 minutes of the stream, for since you don't know, we kind of just spend, um, you know, dicking around and uh, and just babbling <laughs> about <laughs> randomness care. while you guys kind of get into the stream. <clears throat> Karen, can you hear me better? Yes. Oh, that sounds much. Okay. That sounds much more normal for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, All we're right. good then. <sighs> but yes. Soggy Jane is here. I'm so excited. Now I'm all nervous and then blushing and it's uh -oh. wonderful. <laughs> no, it's just another just another RPR I want to make my wife. I want to make so many people my wife. <laughs> How, are you gonna have time for all these wives, Landon? Yeah, I mean, I this is such a commitment. I don't have time for myself, let alone these wives. Which is why <laughs> I, many, I can get many other wives too. It's fine. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right. We're all Polly here. It's fine. Yeah, let's just go for it. <clears throat> also, my love and affection is simply from afar and not up close at all. So, like... <laughs> Where it's safe. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to love you silently and from afar and not a stream in which you can't reply. It's cool, guys. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, shall we get into the topic? Yes, yes. Um, go Got ahead it. and get us get us started. How how are we gonna how are we gonna start today? Well, I think that the only place we can start is at the end. Oh. Um. No, let's start like where we're at, right? Let's start with um, how to end an RP. Okay. Um, because I think that that is something that is relevant to all of us right now. With um, for those of you on the stream who aren't a part of Atlantis, Atlantis is wrapping up very, very quickly, um, and it is coming to an end. And so let's focus on how best to do that. Let's let's talk about it. Yeah. So at this point in our role play careers, we have ended lots of um, lots of role plays. Some of them end more successfully than others. I feel like our most successful one was probably um, Magic Reborn. That's the first time our group has actually like set an ending and then actually freaking wrote it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I don't that's not happening with Atlantis, clearly, which we'll get into into that. Um, but uh, but but one of one of the things that we that you always have to do when you're ending a group role play is give people plenty of time to actually write the endings before you just close things. I think that's a better way to do it because then you're allowing your players to take ownership of that ending happening, or if they decide like, eh, I don't feel like it, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that's I think that's like. My my number one like first thing that I want to say is give people time to write endings if they so choose. Yes, and that um that comes from a place of experience because we've done both. Yes. <laughs> like, done oh. Hey. oh, thank you so much for following Jane. Oh. <laughs> um, we've done the you know like we're currently doing. Hey, let's you know announce in end of August, beginning of September, whatever time of year it was. Yeah, it was like September. Close, yeah, that we're going to close in December and give everyone plenty of time to write all of these characters off or do what they want with their plots. And then we've also been like, hey, guys, we're closing and moving over here tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> we've done both. We've done both. And um, and and 
I would say that you have positives and drawbacks to each way, but I, I definitely for the times where we've only given people like a week notice, where we've been like, it's closed and we're working on the new one and here you go, like the, uh, I feel like a lot of feelings happen there that are not yes. so nice. <laughs> I just don't think it, it turns out to be fair to the players because we've taken that ownership away from them and now it's not their choice whether they want to end it or just abandon. Now they have to abandon and and that's not fair and um, we've definitely gotten feedback, um, verbal and nonverbal, <laughs> from players yeah. that they did not um, like that. <laughs> yeah, I can say from my own experience that doing something like that, usually there's people that would just go behind your back and continue and continue until they decide regardless rather than and that can and of course that can cause a lot of issues because they're trying because they may try to take over like some npcs that they would have needed that they don't really know how to really utilize properly or uh they will get into disputes of like well this character was integral to my story but we're no longer there so I'm just going to take ownership of this other person's character for the sake of the story. And, and, I, and I've I think, seen that cause a lot of issues. And I think like largely, I don't personally have a problem with that. Yeah. Like if, if I abandoned you and you want to then play my character as an NPC, that's your prerogative. I'm not involved. So it doesn't bother me. I know it does bother a lot of people though. So I just feel like it's, I feel like things tend to go smoother when you don't take choices away from players, right? Because when where, yeah. what you're talking about, Eric, where yeah. I've seen that go down really poorly is not just in the fact that, that they took over something that wasn't originally theirs and the weird feelings that happened with that, which like, that's a whole thing. I made a video about, about how I feel about like, quote unquote, role play plagiarism. Spoilers, I don't care. Yep. <laughs> but um yeah. but there that, are people that, that, have that people sometimes that, that sometimes causes these weird conflicts. It sometimes causes people to like try to take um control as far as other players go. Like sometimes you'll end up seeing things that are like total schisms where like a group of people in the role play say like, Well, we're gonna go make our own thing now because we're upset with this outcome. Right? And um and I yep. don't think that's always the nicest uh, the nicest thing to go through. I do think that we should acknowledge, though, a lot of the times when we get to the point of sitting there and being like, hey, this RP has ended, wrap up your threads today, um, it's because we've already seen a massive exodus. Oh, yeah. Massive interest, or that yep. it's been so slow that no one has posted in a week, or mm -hmm. that everyone is on activity check. Or any of these things. Like, there is usually something that causes us to sit there and go, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it's obvious. It becomes obvious that um, that enough people are are bored with it, for lack of a better yeah. word. You know, if it, and, yeah. and a lot of times this comes from, I know because I'm the main admin, a lot of times this comes from me. Like, I I know definitely when I am bored with a role play. And um, and I feel like, and I feel like the players can kind of sense and do a little monkey see monkey do when they see like the admin and mods kind of bored. They start to basically feel that as well. Like yeah. I think humans, I think us as humans, we are very empathetic creatures. I think we sense things in others regardless of whether we voice them. Even online, we get used to certain behavior patterns, and when those behavior patterns change even ever so slightly, we key into that like really quickly and immediately. And I think this. Is is a place where we where we see it really often in role play when someone is bored you instantly know regardless of whether they've told you regardless of whether they've tried to tried to hide it like you know <laughs> you know it is I mean, obvious I yeah i think i mean absolutely you know when someone is interested in something when yep. they're putting themselves behind something that they're creating mm -hmm. and when they're just going through the motions yep you know and that is incredibly obvious whether it be post length or as much attention to detail or or uh, how often posts, like everyone has their tells and you can pick up on that shift or change. Yep, 100%. Um, not to say that every single shift or change is someone is being bored. Sometimes a lot of people have things going out on the outside that's making it hard to write or X, Y, and Z. But you can tell when there is something off. We are all intelligent creatures who can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yep. I also, yeah, so I think that, but apart, sorry Pickles, did you have something to add to that? No, I was just agreeing. Okay. I just don't want to cut you off. Um, I think also <laughs> something that 
adds to this whole situation in situations that we've just decided to close an RP this week are is because we've been in denial about yeah. the fact that we're closing. <gasps> oh my god, I've been in hardcore denial before. I've done that so much before where it's it's clearly I don't care anymore. Most of the players don't care anymore, but for some reason I have decided that like an ending hurts and I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> like I, mean, I, think for, I think that this is most was most obvious in our first RP and then since and then we discovered that we'll actually stick around each other and just, like go from RP to RP. Oh hell yeah, that was the scariest closure of all of them, the first one. And yeah we, we put it off for months oh my like, god I, as someone who is most hurt like not most hurt i can't speak for everybody else but i was really really hurt i would say you were hurt. most visibly hurt put it that way yes i was also very young and really immature but that's another thing <laughs> <laughs> um i was just always hurt it's fine um <laughs> but yes no i think that uh was because we put it off for so long and then it was this all of a sudden one of us had to like voice this truth that we all were in such denial about yeah and there was this trepidation of are things going to continue is this the end of us as, as a group as an rp if this is what's holding us together is there going to be anything else there was so much attached to that that i think that when you're in a game for so long you can't help but be attached to all of those things um, that you have to trust that you will either find a new group and find a new jive or that you can create something just as good the next time. Yeah. Which we ended up doing. Um. <laughs> and I think that role play, that role play was such a test of us figuring out if we were like more of a fandom where we're just here for, because yeah. we all happen to like role playing or if we were legitimately a community. And it turned out, well, blessedly, we were actually a community and we liked each other yeah. as people. It, it took a little bit of growth and like, yeah. like I mean, and, and if you were around, <laughs> oh, gee, <laughs> if you were around for, um, if you were around for that time, you, you would, or had heard our story of how we began and where we, and where we came from, you would know that like, there was some growth in between that group rp and the next group rp oh yeah it took a little yeah. while to get there but then we we realized that hey no these relationships that we're building are real and that we want to continue to write e with each other in one shape way or form um and i think that when you when you have a mod team and you are making the decision to close an rp that is weighing down on you this like this ending it's not just ending the story it's ending possibly or opening up to an ending of relationships that you've been building mm -hmm. and that's scary so I, yeah. I understand why there is this denial or not wanting to close or wanting to like revamp and restart which in our experience hasn't worked very well we're not good at that I, i'm sure I've, some groups must be because i see them doing it but we are god awful at it no, I mean, and we, um, we get to a point where we're like okay let's be done and yeah like eric i don't know i you you're, you come from like a similar background where you have a, a group that you tend to role play with i know but it's a different group so like yeah, what's we, what's been your experience like as far as that goes uh generally speaking uh we either do a lot of small role plays that kind of keep which kind of keeps us in a ones ones and twos or we will really open up to a huge community of people that can come in and most of the time we actually find that we really have a lot more in common than we initially thought or we or we actually really do enjoy the community so mostly for us uh oftentimes it's more us there for the community rather than the actual role play. Mm -hmm. We can go months, if not years, without role playing together, but we will still be on the same servers, talking, having fun. Uh, one one person in particular on my own server, we she goes by Lynn. She is on honestly somebody that I cannot stand in terms of some of the things that she does but as a role player and as a friend she's fantastic i love her to death for that i have a love-hate relationship with her she knows it we both know it but that's that's our experience is yeah role play might end and it can actually and usually for us it ends just rather abruptly we none of us like to admit that the end is here so we things just tend to abrupt abruptly and like we and you can kind of usually pinpoint at 
the last scene that we're ever going to do in there, but ultimately that's just how our group does it. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we've never actually truly had a proper ending to something. I think there's only been like three role plays I've ever been a part of in my 15 plus years of role playing. <laughs> it's weird to think, but yeah, that's how long I've been role playing. Holy crap. <laughs> long but, time. Yeah. And, and one of them, and most of those were actually done with my former co-owner who actually just recently came back to, to the nerd, Razren. He, he and I have done a lot of role plays together and usually... And most of our role plays just end because one of us just is no longer feeling it. So we actually, so for the two of us, we will usually uh, revamp the story or just start over with different characters as the mains and stuff like that. And that's because we've created a lot of settings that we just personally have latched on to. Mm -hmm. And that, so that's kind of been our experience with that is having that having that community there while still having these worlds that we become really attached to that we just keep bringing upon itself yeah um jane i see your question in there i don't let me forget i want to circle back to that at the end because i want to focus on like the endings right now but i do think it would be nice to answer that at the very end when we kind of after we've talked all about endings let's talk about okay well now that you've ended it's time to start the new one yeah, I like that. Yep. As a, as a yeah, question. um, Eric, I love I a, that question actually. Jay. Okay, sweet. Um, Eric, I love a lot of what you said. Um, it, you know, because when one on one hand, I think about something like um, this is a thought I have often. Are your friends really your friends if they don't piss you off sometimes? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of I can't think of somebody that um that uh that I really that I really truly love and uh, and consider like one of my real real online friends that doesn't piss me off sometimes, right? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> um, so, so that being said, I, I think what you experience, what you're talking about, what you experience is pretty normal, right? Like, I don't think yeah. that, um, I don't think for most role plays you ever get to the ending or you ever even really get to state that an ending happens, but I think we all know it and feel it and experience them in that way. And I, I think that that's, that's really important. Right. And, um, and when it comes to those endings, I think what the, what the most important factor is in regard to that is really has to do with um with communication because i think sometimes what happens with role play endings in addition to all the fears that we talked about is what if one person is ready for the end and ready to do something else instead and maybe the other person isn't yet so um yeah. so landon I, i'm sure you have some really good thoughts on that so i'd be really i'd be really curious if you could go first on that question yeah. Um, okay, so I, <laughs> I don't like to end things. <laughs> so I am typically um, one of the people who is not ready to end something. Uh, even though all signs point to it should end. And it probably has already ended, even though I'm in denial about it. Um, <laughs> and, and so I think that one of those things is realizing that... It, it is ending is better than forcing someone else to play with you. Oh yeah. Like, they don't, if someone isn't feeling it anymore or isn't there anymore, it's that same thing that it's like, Oh, we know when people are, I, can, I can actually really agree. With yeah. Yeah. We know when people aren't putting their heart into it. And I hate, like it, it hurts to receive messages. Like, and I'm not talking like personal DMS. I'm talking like posts where people's, aren't or people aren't as invested as I am like that that hurts even more and I didn't realize that for the very long time oh I would just like internalize that and then just be like well why aren't they this is about me this is about like and it, it was it was my stuff and I own that but that's part of it like I would sit there and I go but if they're agreeing to keep playing then they should put themselves into it but the reality is is that they're already one foot out the door and being able to follow them is a skill that you need to learn and following them is sometimes what is necessary mm -hmm. um and and not taking that and not internalizing that sort of end as being the end it's just the end of this and that 
you know what? No, it's it's okay. Let's let's find something better so we can get back to where we were. Yeah, I love that you said that because there's so many people out there that talk about how they want to find a long term role play partner. But what does that even mean? And I think what part of what it means that you just stumbled on really is that it means having that ending and beginning skill, like that yeah. skill to to end things effectively and and then go start a new one, you know? Yeah. Yep. And there is, like you were saying, there's open communication. So if I really sit there and I go, okay, I understand, I get it that you, you're you done with this or whatever, but can we finish this thread? Can we finish this? Or could we talk about and plot out where this would have gone? Mm -hmm. Like I need, because I'm not good at the sudden end or whatever. Mm -hmm. So having, having that communication and being able to advocate to myself in that relationship and be like, hey, I understand that we can't do this anymore, that we're not ending, but let's, let's figure out where it would have gone mm -hmm. um, let's let's play that so at least then i can i can feel that sense of closure that i personally need in order to close the book on this character yeah and that's such a much easier conversation to just have that have that conversation yeah. than to try to get them to role play it out with you you know absolutely yeah and most people totally do that yeah um i also find myself with <laughs> with a certain people that I don't need to do that anymore too, because I recognize that this this story is not the last story, mm -hmm. um, and also the this story and version of the character is not going to be the last version of the character I play with that character. Aww. So sometimes some of those characters can have loose ended strings, and I and I'm perfectly okay with it. So it's kind of like a it takes you a little bit longer to build up that trust is kind of what I'm hearing, right? Well. I mean, you don't have to shout out my trust issues right now. <laughs> but I think that's I think that's super common, right? I think that's what a no, lot of role players are experiencing is they have Absolutely. not spent the time building up that trust. And so then, you know, they, they hear advice like this and they're like, well, I'm not so sure that's going to work for me. And it's like, you know, the, the answer is, well, you just got to be patient. You do. And it is, unfortunately, it's part of that. You got to wait until you find that that partner, or that community that fits yeah. you. In it. And I, I know it sucks, especially when you haven't found it to be like, oh, my God, where is where is my person? But the reality is, is that a lot of these these relationships and, and friendships start with having the ability to have these conversations. Yep. Do yep. that. Um, and, and bowing out when you need to bow out instead of forcing yourself to play with someone or like or play a, or play a plot that you're no longer invested in mm -hmm. like all of this is how you build a stronger friendship and a stronger connection to write with someone yeah i love that that was so, so good i don't even have a follow-up i don't even have follow-up comments I'm, on that question it was just it was no, so that, good <laughs> i'm just all knowing um i think though however to kind of continue on that to continue on that on the group scale um when you are ending a group RP, you have to recognize that people are going to handle that differently. Mm -hmm. So some people might be perfectly okay with stopping. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot harder to have those conversations, I think, when it's on a group scale. If you're the person who's like, no, I want to RP all these threads out. And all of a sudden, everyone around you is stopped. Yeah, everybody's like, eh, I'm good. I don't need it. And you're like, but, 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 but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I think that having those conversations is a lot harder and it takes a lot more work and um, because you're having to have those conversations with several different people. Yeah, because you have to have it um, over and over and over, <laughs> over and over and over, and it does get exhausting. And, and it's not necessarily as satisfying, right? Yeah. Because, like, because it, does, it does kind of feel like sometimes when it's like, let's have a conversation about where this would have gone so I can get to a place of closure, um, that, that isn't like getting the full meal, it's getting a taste of the meal. But the more taste you have of the meal, the more you're like, I wish I had the full meal. Oh, it's <laughs> um, kind of like an appetizer. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ease. But it, it, and it sends you to a good place, like a place where you're like, I'm good. But when you're having that over and over and over again, it can feel like you're still hungry for more. Mm. Um, and so that's something that you have to recognize. And as a, also as a uh, mod, I think it's also very much because you spent so much time building this world and also playing in this world to watch people just abandon it can be a little difficult. Better late I've, than never, Lar. Yeah. Sorry, I go ahead. I can, <clears throat> I can actually um, completely relate to that because, I mean, having created two worlds now, two massive 
worlds, one continent size, one that spans three continents and two continent size islands that I put so much time and effort in. And then when endings come and or if people drop out, it does kind of hurt me because it's just like I put a lot of this time and effort in. So mm-hmm. you have to say, yeah, you have to not only say goodbye to the RP or the world or or the people, you also have to say goodbye to the world you've created. It, it is exactly. sad. Like I struggled with that. I struggled with that really hard. Landon probably remembers very clearly with one of our role plays, First Blood. I had put so much effort into that, and so that two and two big horrible things happened. I didn't see the flaws inherent in what I had designed, which was a big problem that I've since fixed. And yep. then the second thing was is because it was the most work I had ever put into a role play before. I did not understand how people could get bored with it, which is like a stupid, that is like such a stupid thought. Of course, people are going to eventually get bored with it. People eventually get bored with everything. Yep. But for some reason, in, in my, you know, ignorant mind, it was like, it was somehow like personal that people eventually got bored with it, even though, duh. Okay. So I want to argue, argue with that point so bad. And maybe it's because I am also still in denial about that RP. I don't think people got bored with the RP. I think that is one of the few examples where people did not get bored. I think, unfortunately, the way it was built works against us. Oh, my God. But I built <laughs> it so stupid. It was, like, literally, we wrote ourselves into corners. Yeah. And like, that was, I think, yep. so I think that if we could rejoin that world or have the mechanics of being able to work around that world, we would have stayed much longer. And, well, maybe not because we also had another RP running at the same yeah, time. Yeah, we wouldn't have stayed much we wouldn't have stayed much longer, but maybe I would have not uh, had such a reaction. I think it probably still yeah. would have ended, but I think maybe it would have I, been better, a better ending. And I and I think that if it was just built different, it would have lasted long. Because I think that was the other thing, too, is that we put you specifically, but also the mod team, put yeah. so much work into building lore, world, uh, skills, characters, Oh my god, it, it was ridiculous. Died. The RP died in like five months. Yeah, super fast. Which for us is a super short RP. Um, and and especially at that time when we had another RP that had been running for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were like, we put so much blood, sweat, and tears, and especially you creating such an amazing, like Naomi was, Naomi was drawing a map. Yeah, like, like that's how big it was. <laughs> map. And, and the fact that there was no satisfaction because we didn't even get to, like, get to the main plots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, sorry. No. That was, that was my rant. That, <laughs> I, think, I think that that, that one is, is special and, and is rare in our case mm-hmm. as far as why it ended. It was the mechanics of how it was built. Yeah, but I want to circle back to kind of what we started with about the two ways of closing down a group role play. Because one thing I definitely want to say in the method that we use now where we try to give people time, you know, like a few weeks at least, warning. Um, we're giving them a lot of time right now because holidays happen to be happening and da 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 da. But typically it's like a month, maybe like three weeks or something like that before the ending to give people time to wrap up. Um, what we found is that most people actually don't want to wrap up. Most of them just want to say, all right, I'll wait for the next thing. But they want to be given the option right they don't yeah, want that yeah. agency to be taken away from them they want to be they want it to be like up to them that they abandon the role play right and if it is then what we have found is that people are so much happier to to end and move on to the new thing and be excited about the new thing instead of l- spending a lot of energy lamenting the old thing so yeah. if you if you've not done this method that we're talking about before and you decide to adopt it from hearing what we're saying don't expect people to actually write endings. I'm just going to tell you right now, they won't, right? It's just not going to happen. <laughs> they're going to be like, all right, it's the end. I don't care anymore. And they're going to move on. But they're just going to be so much more pleasant and receptive to it because you made that choice on them instead of taking the choice away from them. Yeah. And it, yep. I mean, it's also giving them that choice and everything like that continues to build a positive community. Yep. Um, so that you can you can have those doors open for the next adventure. Mm-hmm. Did yeah. you have anything to add, Pickles? Uh, not really, since all my endings kind of have happened in one v one v one role plays. Mm-hmm. So. Well, let's talk about one on ones. I feel like you know that's another that's another group where sometimes 
you know, you can have a lot of feelings surrounding endings. So, so if a lot of your endings have happened in, in, uh, in one-on-one, um, if you want to start with that, what are some of your thoughts on like how, on like what it means to end a one-on-one role play? Well, generally speaking, I, when we've done one-on-one role plays, it's, you, it's usually done where we will discuss the scenes beforehand mm. and then act out the scene. And, and there will be some things that could change, some things that don't. So, and uh. so you will be writing out all these scenes yeah. and everything. And yeah. it can, and ultimately it will end with the ending will come into the scene and then you will start up and then you give yourself a couple, like a week or two to start up the next scene. And then you keep going at a pace like that. And eventually you will get to where it's actually time to end the story. And with that, it's usually a, a big climactic ending that you've been building up to like your like, for example, for my one, v- one with Razorin that we called Nightmares Nakashima, we ended up getting bored about three quarters of the way through. Neither one of us could put in the effort to actually get to where the ending would, would be. So we just <laughs> vocally role played the ending. And <laughs> so you just talked it out. Yeah. Well, we talked, uh, we talked, we talked it out and then. We are, and then we RP'd it with our voices. No, no tabletop, no nothing. Just we were still in the voice chat, and we just acted out the characters as with our voices, and it actually helped progress us along into the ending fast enough to where we we were facing the final boss. We we're we we're in this big climactic fight, and it was. It was so much fun and such a good, and it was actually really nice to see it come to that end, even though we didn't get to the point, didn't actually get to that point, because there was one area that I had to go through left that would have been crucial to the storyline, which I would have been helping out this ghost called the Ice Queen. Oh. And I unfortunately didn't get to do that. We we have looked at revisiting it, but. Uh, we're we're still not sure if we're gonna end up doing that or not. So, uh, but that is a way that I usually get to my endings is by discussing it with others, and then of course, the vast vast majority of my endings being combat role plays. So I don't really consider those because they usually just end with either somebody surrendering, somebody killing the other character. Or one character running, one character running away, or getting knocked out, or both characters getting knocked out. So those yeah. endings are easy to get to. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think with combat role play, like you don't have this problem in the way that we do with narrative role plays, where you actually have to put like thought and effort into endings and things like that. Oh, ab- ab- <laughs> absolutely, it's it's much easier, but of course. Com- the combat community is a bit toxic currently and yeah. people get butt hurt halfway through when somebody does something they don't agree with judges get called in and that usually just ends it right there because at that point neither one of them wants to wants to continue it yeah <laughs> well yeah it's a uh, so interesting <laughs> yeah, yeah I, it's someone I, I've never been a part of the, the combat RP so it's just always fascinating to hear perspectives from that side but I think um, I think you know communities can be toxic or at least part of communities can be toxic anywhere because there are certainly parts of the literary RPs oh, that oh are, hell yeah um, that oh, absolutely. <laughs> and get, and get butter um, halfway through writing a thread I'm, if, they, if you do something <laughs> they don't agree with um, <laughs> I mean one, one element in literary roleplay that I constantly see is the literate are peers, quote unquote, versus 
their oh. counterpart. Oh my gosh, that's a whole that's a whole thing. Let's I mean, not de- you, let's yeah. not derail into that because I, I'll 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 start going. You, you you did a video on that anyway. Yeah, so I did. Can, <laughs> okay, so let's skip over that. that. Let's go. If you, ever, if you ever want to hear those rants, you can check out one of the episodes of Enter Stage Window because um, we've talked about the differences and the judgments that happen between them. <laughs> yeah, we did, and I have a spare room episode on that too. So there's like there's multiple pieces of content on on the channel. Um, yeah. But but going back to let's go back to endings. Um, go ahead, Landon. Yeah. Well, no, like and let's let's actually I think this is a good segue because um, let's talk about how do you end a certain plot or a thread. Like let's step away from endings, the totality of of ending a complete arc. And let's just talk about the minor endings, the endings that happen every single thread. Yeah. Um, how do you do that? How do you do a good ending when it comes to part of your writing cycle? Yeah. So I kind of, right. there's kind of like two ways to end a role play thread, right? And so I'm just talking about a specific scene, a specific thread. I'm not talking about like the whole plot, right? So either both of you kind of get bored with that thread and you end it, which we've you know talked about the feelings in regard to that, or you actually plan an ending. Like, I feel like those are the two main things and at least I've been successful with, you know? Or, yeah, or when, or when, sorry. I also want to add, I think that there's a third ending is of finding out when to end it. When oh. is it impactful for a thread to end, especially in high intense scenes? Mm-hmm. Uh, if, even if it hasn't been planned out, like at what point is it that you just stop saying yes and? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've definitely, I guess I have had that before where I've been writing a thread and I, I read the person's post and I'm like, oh, that's so good. Like, that's so good. There's nothing that can yeah. happen after this that's that's any better. So like, this is the end of the scene. Like the next thing is going to be a new scene, right? They're going to yeah. be somewhere else or be doing something else. Um, yeah, I have experienced that now that you say it. Eric, you had a particular, you, like, when we talked about what we wanted to talk about, you came out right off the bat and batted hard for cliffhangers. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I absolutely love cliffhangers, and this is actually something that I love utilizing as the GM. Because, oh. <laughs> uh, and it's something that you can do as a player as well, but... Um, and it, that has a lot to go into with the discussion aspects. But as the GM, you can actually complete. You can actually have your, two of these characters role playing something, and then come in and be like, and if you plan it out correctly, you can actually cut them off and letting them know beforehand, cutting them off, so that way you can actually be like okay, we're going to make this a cliffhanger ending. So people aren't going to really know what's going to be the reactions, like, or what's going to happen. I've actually done this with one of my, with one of my characters, well, actually an NPC, and my, and my former character, Unati, which, yeah, by the way, that is how you pronounce it, Unati. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard many pronunciations for it. So. But uh, you will, but uh, his brother in the in the scene, he and his brother are sitting are sitting there fighting his resurrected father. This is on a whole plot line that we did in the clan verse, where um, a character ended, where an NPC ended up getting a hold a hold of this sword called the... <laughs> ah crap I. I can't remember, but it's one of the 16 forbidden swords within the world. They're so, and it wouldn't, and they're not really powerful. It's more that they have severe drawbacks on the user that usually results in death. So like cursed weapons. Exactly. And with these, and he used this weapon to resurrect the entirety of the Hashiko clan that Unadi is actually originally from. He and and within this world, uh, his son Ilias mind white, mind controlled some of the old clansmen to actually join Unadi's side because there was going to be a civil war going on. Towards the and within the ending, 
you actually had Unadi, his brother, fighting his fighting his his real father. Because long story short, Unadi got adopted. The birth parents found him, didn't like that he got adopted, killed the birth, killed the adopted father, and established a new group called the Hashko siblings, where they blood they made blood brothers of four members within the clan. Unadi was one and this character was another. So I end it with uh, a sword getting that's pierced through Unadi's stomach and his brother laying half dead on the floor and one care and another player character running in to see this awful scene and I cut it there. Oh. So and then it of course now you're wondering, okay, what's gonna happen? Is this char- are these characters dead? Or Sure kinda seems like it, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but well, I assume not since you cut the scene. Yeah. <laughs> now uh um United's brother ended up in a coma. He uh, they, they, if the RP had continued, they would have woken up soon. Um, Unadi has a sword that controls his powers, and it is actually that sword that was pierced through Unadi's stomach. So, pulling it out, he was able to use his powers and abilities to heal himself. But he's in a very—he's still in a very critical state because Unadi actually had cancer at this time. <laughs> oh gosh! Okay, wow. Yeah. That, so that is quite the qu- cliffhanger. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, yeah. Have a, I just have a question on the how the how the actual like mechanics of this work. Do you guys work in time lock, or is everything like free flowing for time? Um, every everything's free flowing for time okay. because we we are heavy on discussion. We mm. got you. If we are planning something, it is because it. Or role playing something, it is because we discussed it. So this, we, this cliffhanger wasn't a shock to the other players in the group, or was it? Uh, it it wasn't to the it was to the players, but not the GMs because the GMs. Uh, discussed it. So like the GMs knew, and the people in the scene knew, but like the rest of the role play did not necessarily know. Exactly. Got okay. it. Okay, yeah, that I makes sense. Figure out how, like, as a writer, I would, because, like, I was when we came up with cliffhangers, I was trying to figure out how do we, how do you write that? How do you like, because if there are scenes happening after this certain point in time, you would have to assume that those people would have to know what happened in order for it to remain correct yeah. canon. And so, just trying to figure out, like, I was like, oh man, cliffhangers would be so hard. But it sounds awesome. No, but it yeah, sounds no, like it, no, but it, it sounds like we could do them though. Like at least the yeah, way that the way that um the way Eric that you've got your role plays set up sounds like it's similar enough to the way that we we run ours that we could be doing more cliffhangers if we so choose. For some Absolutely. reason, I guess we choose not to. Well, maybe yeah, we should. maybe uh, we should. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> that's kind of the great. misconception on cliffhangers and role play is oh they're going to be so hard to incorporate. Uh, not really, if. Because if you're, if it's a one, one x one or one v one role play, and you're ending off on a cliffhanger, you're doing it for the suspense of the reader. In yes. That case, yes. Rather than the actual players, but in a group role play, the GMs are doing it in, in, to suspense the other player, in, to suspense the other players that are outside of the scene. It definitely scratches that like role play as performance itch that used to it used to be something that I actually did do kind of frequently in forum role plays because on a lot of forums you can see how many clicks and reads your your particular um, thread is getting right so you can kind of tell yeah. if people are clicking into it and reading it that are not your partner based on the number of clicks it's getting and which threads are clearly more popular and which ones aren't da 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 and all that so I feel like. That is a great technique if you are if you are in these types of role plays that are like forum role plays where people are encouraged to read everything. 
um, it really it re- it really does turn that role play into a performance, which I know is very attractive for for a lot of us, especially a lot of us that have um, you know a little bit more of an acting background when we're coming into the the role play scene. <laughs> I actually, you know what, it hit me as you were talking that I think I have done a cliffhanger. Um, oh. When Cassandra killed Lucian. Oh yeah, that was a cliffhanger. We didn't because I y'all told me, but nobody yeah. else knew. <laughs> And, and no people one... were guessing. Oh, people were guessing hardcore. Like, did, yeah. did did is he dead? Is he dead? Is he coming back? And like, there was legit conversation of like people, you know, betting. Like, no, he's coming back. I know it. Or people were like, nope, they wouldn't have done that. He's dead. Like, there was camps. <laughs> yeah. And like, we had to explain like from ex- exhibition or like from us talking about it that Cassandra. Like, I had I didn't have Cassandra like arrest or anything like that i literally just have her scream mm-hmm. and like that was the end so yeah i guess i guess we kind of i, mm-hmm. I i've done it but i didn't even think of it as no but it was because when she way. came back when she came back it was like she had been arrested we didn't yeah. role play out the arrest <clears throat> no i didn't yeah i didn't role play out any of that she was already in jail and, and it ended on that screen which is a cliffhanger so yep i guess we're already doing it now <laughs> <laughs> didn't even know didn't even know <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> no, but I love this. Um, this is this is kind of like giving me a whole new way to think about that type of ending because I, I wasn't really thinking about it consciously either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that I think, you know, and I think <laughs> there's a reason they're my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> and I think what you said, um, Karen, is that it's really important to keep in mind that um it is almost performative. You have to you're you're hoping that other people will be reading that. Yeah, because if they're not, what's they're the point? Here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not, if it's a one-on-one, you're not gonna end in you're not gonna end in a cliffhanger. Uh, I give. I mean, you could, I guess, for the literary want, but it's not gonna have as much of an impact as if you have other people who aren't in on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why I said for one. That's why I'm going back for one for one v one cliffhangers. It is very important that you have the readers. Yeah. Otherwise there really isn't a point it is actually a good way to show your literary talent it's, it's still practice right readers <clears throat> yeah but generally speaking unless you're actually getting in those readers i wouldn't recommend keep doing them personally when i was on still doing forum role playing i by the end of my career i think i had like 16 17 readers Per thread usually so yeah yeah and i i can kind of relate to that um very like in regards to forum role play that was definitely the case the only t- other time i can remember that i ever had readers was on my um Haley marshall blog on on tumblr for some reason people really keyed into that blog that particular indie blog and i had i had actual readers that didn't role play with me that's the only other time i can really think of it outside of groups well like and, and i also we've been a part of you know, like you were saying that that there are you can tell that there are more popular threads. And there oh are yeah, ships and there are more popular writers and stuff like that. And we we've, we've been on our fair share of being the popular. Yeah, ship. sometimes our characters are the popular ones, and sometimes they're not. Right? Absolutely. We've we've had uh, probably the gamut of experiences within our role plays. But there are certainly, <laughs> especially when we talk about like original Rab and Abby. Like, oh my God. Higher RP waiting with bated breath. Sometimes. They they were so their original incarnation was like ridiculous. <laughs> yes. So I so yeah I think that like RP I love that I think that cliffhangers are definitely something that if you want a especially if you want a quick and dirty ending that or an impactful ending even that you are that you're willing to leave it hanging and not play out the entire scene of emotion i think is can be a really useful tool mm-hmm. especially to engage other people's interests mm-hmm, for yeah. sure um yeah so i think that that's a great one do we want to talk about other kinds of endings yeah because i think i think we have a good segue in there right because if we think about uh the way that a cliffhanger is like a very uh short and quick emotional impact because there's that sense of unknowingness um, when it comes to endings where you actually are writing out that full ending, um, I think where you choose to end it or the place you choose to end it, the most important thing to consider is, does this have the emotional impact that I want it to have at the end of the scene? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Which I think is a really hard balance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it honestly is. <laughs> because there, we've all been part of those scenes where it's like, this should have ended six yeah. posts ago. It's like, and it's still going, <laughs> yeah. and neither of us can get the balls to be like, no, it's the end. And it's like, ugh. Like, oh. <laughs> uh, tried to say goodbye seven times now. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it, it ends up turning into that conversation at the store where... You see someone from work or whatever, and you're like, oh, hi, how's it going? Yeah, and you're like, you okay, I'm going. And, yeah, hi. <laughs> Gotta go uh, now. <laughs> and they, but they're just still like, ah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's the role play of equivalent of like, okay, I'm going to go to the counter and actually buy these eggs I've been holding for 10 minutes now. Bye. <laughs> 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 yes, exactly. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so trying to sit there and, and find that moment of impactful ending and swift exit, <laughs> but also being really bad at ending <laughs> is it's, a thing. It's tough, right? Like, I think, well, I think yep. one thing that gets in the way of that is both of the people participating thinking that the other person might be upset with them if the thread ends, right? <laughs> Yeah. So I feel like I feel yeah. like that's like the the background thing that's happening that makes people behave that way and continue and continue and continue when it's like clearly ending because they're thinking yeah. oh what if the other person gets mad at me but then the other person's also thinking oh god what if the other person gets mad at me and then you're in this endless loop <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like let's also be honest like my sometimes it's like that like oh my god be mad at me but it, sometimes it's also like no you do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh that well, happens I'm too that. that that is definitely something that happens more in my group because honestly my group is kind of as you know we're a bit more trolly than most other people <laughs> we, we, like, we like to really have fun you have the you other, have the so. troll spirit <laughs> exactly so, so for us we're it's less of it's less about us hurting feelings and more about us being lazy and not wanting to do it. Uh. <laughs> I feel that so hard. I will write 10 useless replies before I actually end the thread. Well, and, uh, Simply because I'm like, oh, this is fine. Jane, I love that you found the hurt feelings relatable because that's where I feel like um, I tend to fall. But I know what y'all mean with saying like, I don't want to do do the ending because the truth is it's the same reason that people don't want to do starters. They're actually kind of work. You have to figure out how to tie everything yeah. together in a way that, that feels that feels like emotionally impactful, that the scene meant something, that the scene did something to the characters or, or to the plot or to the world or yep. whatever. And sometimes in role play where we're doing a lot of emergent storytelling sometimes the truth is there is a useless thread that doesn't mean anything you know it's not a book where yep. we've carefully planned it and edited it and da, da 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 like some threads are completely pointless and we probably did waste our time and shouldn't have done them you know so it's pressure yeah it's true yeah and, and sometimes you also have that like pressure of being like if i end it now it does become one of those threads and i hate those threads yeah, and now and now I have no choice. I have this useless thread, and I can't fix it because it's so maybe the end. If I keep talking yep. about eggs, it'll become something existential and really important for characters. Yeah, which, which, sorry to be a broken record, but that's actually why I really enjoy discussing what's gonna actually happen throughout the whole thing with mm -hmm. with some minor changes there. Because if because if I don't because if I don't then. Yeah, I'm going to con be continuing on that thread until I either get bored of it or until we finally are like, okay, this has become useless. Just end it. Yeah. No, that, I am I am a big proponent of, of plotting, but I know also, like, not everyone is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, think, um, I think I do care about plotting a lot, but I think you definitely are a bit more of a plotter than I am. Um, I don't always mind it so much, but I think for the threads that I don't plot this absolutely happens to me, right? Like yeah. the threads that I do plot, it doesn't happen. It's not a problem because we plotted it. You know what I mean? So um, so I definitely like feel that on the threads where I'm just like, well, I don't care. Let's just do something because I, I like your character, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jane. Uh, I am Naomi made her into a plotter. Uh, Na Naomi is another one that's a heavy, heavy Naomi. into plotting. Yeah, Naomi and my DMs oh. sometimes are really scary. <laughs> 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 but, 
Not mm. because, like, I mean, we're talking about weird stuff, but also because, like, we're just like, well, in 2067, these, this ship will... And then it's like, okay. We're back That's right. never going to happen, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's fine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> make each other worse and also better. <laughs> it's true. Um, there's, yeah. it, there's, there's positives and, and drawbacks, uh, no matter what methods you choose, right? No, oh, abso- <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. For- I mean, I I've role played with plenty of people that don't like that don't like the plan. I mean, that's actually a huge thing in the combat community because why would you plan to lose? Oh, because <laughs> so, they don't get oh, it because they don't think of it the same way that we do on the narrative exactly. side. Exactly. I'm sorry, but planning to lose is so much better than planning to win. I agree. I, I think agree. it's so much. I think it's I so much more fun and there. easier. <laughs> but. Back when I was in that combat roleplay mindset, it was, no, I have to win. The point of this whole thing is to show that I am a better narrative writer. I'm I'm better at knowing how to use a power. I'm better at this, better at that. You're just playing to win at roleplay. And after, and soon enough, you either get bored of it or you just never grow out of it and that's unpopular, unpopular and, opinion that is not an unpopular opinion yeah uh, playing a loser so much better than playing a winner it's true <laughs> oh my god i agree and so much more like flex on skill if you can play a good loser you are automatically a better level of rp than playing a good winner yep. just um, my personal opinion. landon can you go in the chat and mute that yeah. spam bot every time we get s- seven or more viewers i swear to god why is seven the magic number for these stupid bots anyway <laughs> sorry that, that is a good question <laughs> uh okay um yeah i think i think when it comes when it comes to like being really good at endings uh having a little bit of plotter in you is critical because when i if i think about like my younger days of role playing where i was truly freaking awful at endings it was because like i didn't discover (laughs) what plotting was or what it could do for me uh until like years and years into into role playing um so i think that's that's like a huge part of it yeah I there was a hard lesson for me to learn as well that plotting was absolutely better better for me because uh because the huge trans because it is actually a huge transition in all mindset from combat to literary mm-hmm. like yeah you're you're still role playing on forums or Discord or wherever but if your main focus is that win it is something that is difficult to get out of yeah i understand i mean it's it's a very different mindset um competition versus collaboration right like i've talked about that yeah um so you know cha- changing that that mindset uh really changes everything that you're doing in regard to role play and but i do think i do think that 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 cooperative nature is um is critical to feeling happy and satisfied with your endings exactly mhm um, okay, so I'm just taking taking a quick peek at the notes. Landon, are you back with us? Or did you figure out how I to take care of that bot? I did not figure out how to take care of that bot. There should be Kendra knows how to do it. Oh my gosh, um, she knows she knows I how know. to do it. I'll You're have to. Better mod than I am. <laughs> <laughs> she's not. She's not. Y'all are both great mods. You have different skills. Um, but they didn't say anything else. So okay, whatever. It's fine. Um, they're they're just gonna come back anyway. Oh, he found it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Good mod. Oh, uh, you did it. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> All I had to do was click on its name. Oh. Um, round of applause, everybody. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so so when it comes to endings, I think I think really what we've discovered is is if you want to feel satisfied with it, you have to like kind of seek within yourself some of that those uh those habits that are making you unsatisfied right like i think that's kind of the main point that we're all trying to make here i i can completely agree there um yeah (laughs) (laughs) 
Sorry, yes. Yeah. I was still reeling over the fact that I figured that out. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> hey, Twitch is hard. I'm still such a boomer when it comes to Twitch. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, I meant to smash the thing. Whatever. I'll grow it again. The layout of this better. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I signed up to be a mod. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, no. What, yeah, what you were saying, Karen. <laughs> yes. So I think I think like that's really the point of it. If like if you're if you're bad at endings, clearly what we have uh, discovered or kind of come to in this conversation is there's lots of ways to handle it, and and but ultimately you have to be thinking it, that it's okay to end things within yourself because until you get there, you're going to continue with some flavor of these struggles, right? And, yeah. And like the other thing is practice makes perfect. Oh yeah. But, like, like the first ending is going to be tough on anybody. Yep. Uh 25th ending? Nah. Bad. You're going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be okay. Shall we uh shall we switch directions to the ultimate ending? Yes. Okay. So Landon, activate your avatar. You're now the um the avatar of death. <laughs> I heard a rumor that you want to kill your character. Shit. And you know what? I pride myself on uh, <laughs> killing characters off. Yeah. In dramatic and often bloody ways. Uh, We've done it many uh, times now. Many, yep. many times. And I mean, I'm not going to lie. All of us in the RP are fairly skilled at this. But I think that uh, if you really want to kill a character... I've got some advice for you. Okay, lay it on us. Ending in itself. Um, the number thing, the number one right thing to do, or thing to do, is to know when it's right to do it. Yeah. If you yeah. want to kill a character for shits and giggles, uh, cool, do it. Uh, but plan it, mm -hmm. make it special. Yeah. You're you sending off something that you worked hard to create and had other people care about it. So send it off in the right way. Don't mm -hmm. let it just like go and fade into obscurity or randomly die for ways that don't follow, you know, lore or anything like that. I, you make it a moment and a meaning. Um, and that is my number one thing yeah. when it comes to a character. Yeah. Make I, it mean something. I 100% agree. And I would, I would even take that a little bit further to say that this is one of those times where even if you don't like plotting, um, you must. It is not avoidable. Yeah. You must oh, do some plotting because you have to seek consent. Like if you're gonna kill off a character, you need to seek consent from your shipping partner. You need to seek consent from um, if that character has family members in the role play. If, if, if that character is being used as a major part of another character's plot, yeah. like you oh, yeah. have to seek that consent. Um, because what w it would really suck to build up this amazing death and it, and it feels so satisfying, but then you find out one person in the RP now all of a sudden has to completely change um, everything that they were building up to in their writing. And now it's um, an out of character fight that you have to go deal with and, and handle those emotions and all of those sorts of things. Like that's not fun. Yep. So seek consent before you are too far in the process. It is required. Yes. And by the way, and maybe this is my own personal opinion, um, but consent is not, I'm doing this thing. Are you okay with it? No, it's not. It's, <laughs> I want to do this thing. Here's what I, here's, here's what my plan is. Um, you know, is that going to be okay? Or is that going to totally jack up your character? Or what can we do to make sure that we can get to a place where this is okay? Yeah. Or like, make sure that you realize that you have built partnerships with your character. If it's ships or family relationships or anything, you have built these partnerships and you can fuck it up by killing your character off. Yep. Um, and we gotta, you gotta be really conscious of that. Yeah. Um, and, and for better or for worse, like, I mean, it may be it may be such that um you know we're trying to separate ourselves from our characters but having a character that was a vital part of your character's story completely killed off like that's gonna that you didn't know about it like that's gonna hurt that's gonna hurt no matter who you are and no matter how good your separation is because that's just such a final thing yeah, yeah. or or even even if it doesn't hurt 
you, on some level, having to rework plots, like, around that sucks. So I'm not saying that, like, you, that's, I'm not saying that you shouldn't kill something off because you've promised something to someone else. Mm -hmm. But you do need to get everyone on board and on that same level. You can't just blindside them. You can't just make this decision for them. Um, it, you you got to work on that, those partnerships. Yeah, you have to work on it. And you should still try to be able to get what you want, right? Like, don't let someone control your character, right? So, like, I'm not yeah. saying that, like, you should let your shipping partner tell you, no, you're not allowed to kill off your character, right? But you should be open to the conversation of maybe you don't get to kill your character quite yet. Maybe you have to fulfill yeah. certain narrative obligations before that. Um, that maybe the specific way you want to kill off your character is not appropriate and you, you need to, to do something slight, a slightly different way, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm not saying abandon control of your, the narrative you want to write, but you have to have that conversation in, in partnership. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm under the personal, like, like we kind of just said, under the personal belief that killing a character shouldn't just be a whim. Mm -hmm. um, there should be purpose and meaning behind it, whether that to further the full group narrative um, or to end a narrative that, like, an arc or for a sense of purpose or to, or to help somebody else's arc. Mm -hmm. I think those are reasons to kill a character. Um, if you're just bored or unsatisfied with a plot or anything like that, I, a part of me sits there and goes, then either find a new plot or build a plot that's interesting that could result in character death. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, or at the end of the day, stop writing the character. Don't just kill him. Um, especially if you've had obligations with those, that character. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess I, I disagree a little, a little bit with that. I think there are certain contexts where killing a character as a means to get out of playing that character uh, can be valid. Like I think of a specific example, um, and this will probably come to your mind too when I say say what I what I say. I can think of a specific example from our, our first um, role play from LOOH, where we had somebody that was clearly bored, wanted to drop their character, but their character had done so much in the role play that if they just disappeared from the narrative, like it was going to be, affect other characters worse and make things even harder than if they killed off this character. Um, and it, w it wouldn't have made sense. Yeah, well. it wouldn't have made any sense. Like, we would have had to turn this character into an NPC, which the player was not comfortable oh. with. And so, like, I think there are instances where killing off a character to get out of a plot is is valid. But again, you have to but seek consent. A, yeah, and that's also, I, I think that's different than a whim. Right? Yeah. That's different than, oh, something changed and I just want to do it because I don't want to deal with this anymore. Like, especially with that particular example, it took weeks. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it took weeks of her getting bored. Yeah. I mean, and that was like a whole thing. Like, there was a specific, there was specific things that happened that caused her to get bored. Like, it didn't come out of nowhere. Yeah. So, like, and, and, and yes, I, I agree that getting, also, if your character has done enough that it needs an ending. Mm -hmm. So, I guess for me, when I was thinking of that particular, set, what I was thinking of, was you created a character two months into this character you want to drop the character it's for me i said oh yeah and that in those cases like, character like just drop it like in those just cases drop just drop it. just drop the character I, don't bother I, with it get killing them that's <laughs> where my mind is if you've done enough that your character has been an impactful part of other people's stories within the rp mm -hmm. then go ahead and figure out a way to kill that character because it will mean something to someone yeah right if it's not going to mean something, in my opinion, don't don't do it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, that makes sense. Plan for something dramatic and awesome, and like send off this character, and no one gives a shit about this character. No offense, other than you, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, no, I I would agree with that. Like, if you if you've only been in the role play for like two months, or this character's only existed for two months, and you're like, I'm already bored with them. I just, I'm going to kill them off. Like, no one's going to care. So don't, don't bother. Like, just drop them. Like, don't waste your time. <laughs> and hey, hey, Lunar, there is never, there is never too late to join the stream. Yeah. So welcome. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I can say on um, all that, that uh, there have been, there, I've killed off characters, but there's plenty more that I've just left alone because honestly, they, Either the role play for them ended, but and I didn't really want to kill them off because I liked them, or they just <laughs> they uh, just 
got boring and yeah. it was they didn't really have any real significance to anybody else's stories or anything like that so i left them the only the only character i would that i've killed off for narrative purposes is unati hashiko where he and unfortunately we actually didn't get to the actual narrative part where that happens but uh due to free flow you actually can see that he does die due to Unati Victus regaining that that part of himself because the weird thing with Unati Victus is he went insane and being an elemental he just sent parts of his elemental essence to different worlds and stuff like that and decided and because he ultimately decided that he wanted that knowledge but didn't want to waste the time going there himself but that insanity drove him to that and it's actually part of the reason why Unati Hashiko developed cancer because he was just <laughs> this being that wasn't even supposed to be, exist mm -hmm. so and I think that's uh, a really good example of like a, a planned ending that like mattered to the narrative Right? Like it yeah. meant something. So of course you want to have that be like a, a you know, an epic character death. Yeah, because what, what was going to happen is in that in that world, Unadi and his brother would have came, his brother would have came out of his coma still pretty weak. Unadi would have, would be weak when this being that this newly resurrected be, elemental being comes in she's supposed to be extremely powerful jennifer blackblade is what we called her and she and she was an a darkness elemental both of them and knowing full well that his clan couldn't take it on unati hashko used his powers of energy manipulation to teleport his family away from the household that they all lived in along with any animals and stuff like that so then they could fight her but sacrifice themselves for the good of the clan mm. and that would have been the ending of unadi hashiko if we actually had gotten to that yeah um i think a similar thing happened to me with it atlantis like part of the reason it's closing is because i am bored um, but, <laughs> and that's like a whole other thing. I'm, I, when we make the next role play, um, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about like some things that, like some things I want to do differently, uh, that, that I think will, will be helpful, um, for this to not happen again. But what I, what I wanted for Haley was, um, literally to, you know, to get drug out in, into the streets and, um, and, and guillotined, basically. Like, I don't know if they would have used an actual guillotine. We didn't fully really finish plotting it out. But um, I wanted something like that because she was part of um, a system that, uh, that kept everybody on that island um, subservient and, and kept them, you know, staying there. Uh, it made it hard for them to leave. That made it hard for them to, uh, to live this better life that she had promised, right? Or that her family had, had promised. Um, so, you know, it was, it was gonna, it was gonna be super epic, but I, unfortunately I got bored and so it's, it's not gonna get ridden, but you can imagine, just imagine, um, Haley getting drug out into the streets, being, um, being really upset at, at how much Alistair betrayed her because she thought that he was, um, part of her, part of the system too, but no, he was not. And, um, <laughs> and then, uh, and then basically, uh, killed by the mob. So, so just imagine that. It's fun. Here's, here's the problem. That's a wonderful imagination. Rab is so upset that he wouldn't get to see it because I assume he dies first. I mean, he would have to probably. <laughs> like he, I don't see, I don't see how, um, I don't see how he wouldn't. So he'd probably oh, already yeah. be dead by well, this point. You know, he'd, he'd be, he'd be dead. And my, and my inner Rab was just like, but I want to see it. <laughs> if anyway. she needs to be eaten, I would have done it. <laughs> well, you know what, um, Jane? It, uh, what was what was your character's name? I can't remember, but he was um, he was Arthur? He, yeah, Arthur. Um, Arthur could have could have totally uh, taken taken a chunk of flesh if he wanted to and just stuck it in his pocket. I I support. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So I think I think um, especially when we're talking group group RPs and deaths. Your character needs to mean something. Yeah. And uh, 
I also think that kind of along with this, what you were saying about uh, you wanted her dragged to the streets is that that kind of goes hand in hand with it needs to be a satisfying ending for everybody. Yeah. Which means that when it comes to the actual ending, you have to be willing to give up control. Yeah. Um, which, especially with villains, we have found a lot of people when they're killing off villains have a very tough time with. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that in our villain stream, but yes, 100%, if you're playing the antagonist, we have found that people really struggle because when you're playing the antagonist, you get to win and win and win a whole bunch in the beginning. And I think yes. for some, somehow that gets like intoxicating. And there's a, strill, uh, there's a struggle that we've seen happen inside people where like they can't take, they can't take any more than a minor loss because they've won so much because they've been the antagonist. Yeah. And, yep, and I'm, oh, go ahead. Um, I can actually say that's a mindset that you can see a lot in combat role playing mm -hmm. because you get, you get these people that are so used to winning that the thought of even losing seems like the other person has to god mod or something to beat you. And with that mindset, it can easily, it is very, very intoxicating. It's a, a mindset that I've gotten into. It's a mindset that I've seen so many people get into. And ultimately, it's actually very... Uh, uh, what's the what's the good what's a good word for this? Because I mean it's not a bad it's not necessarily bad, but it's not necessarily good either. Because you need to learn when to reel back and understand that it is time for you to start losing for the narrative. Otherwise, yeah. yeah otherwise, I think it's, it's kind of gonna... it's kind of addicting in a way, right? And then when it's time exactly. to let go, like you think you're going to be able to let go, but what we found is a lot of people really cannot. They struggle yeah. with that step. Hell, I struggle with that step. I'm not yeah, <laughs> I still I I play mostly villains and anti heroes, and I struggle with that step. It takes a lot of practice, right? Yeah, yeah, especially when it comes to like the big bads. It's you you want, and I also have a theory that because it's so much harder to play a villain, the attention you get in the RPs is because of their winning that all of a sudden it feels like losing become makes them feel irrelevant. I think that's kind of how it's all connected oh. in the brain. But that's my own personal theory. There's no psych to back that up. Anyway. No, but that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, I definitely can understand how that would be kind of the, the thing behind what's going on there. Yeah, so I, I can understand why it's very, very hard to let go. But when it is your duty to give everyone a satisfying ending it might not be the ending that you want personally yeah because you are playing the bigger part of a whole especially yep. when you have a key a, a key point character especially when you sorry my if you guys can hear the text messages i'm getting i apologize yeah it's right. sorry it's okay <laughs> it's not that often <clears throat> um especially if you are um if you are that main plot that everyone needs a piece of you need to be willing to spread yourself around and not and it, it's a it's a very unique situation that i know we talked about when you're in villains that i think only villains really get to experience because all of a sudden that ending is not your own it's everybody's mm -hmm. yep um, mm -hmm. i mean yeah there are times when the villain can win but generally speaking you okay. need to be able to accept that your that your ultimate goal isn't to actually win but to lose in the end yeah yeah and and it's it's difficult and hard and and i feel for like and i and i have a lot of empathy and sympathy for it but it is um but like at the end of the day we want when we write rps we we are gonna try to strive for a happy ish ending a satisfying ending yeah and even if it's not like happy it's not yeah. it's not happy but it should still feel satisfying typically satisfying because of how our brains are wired there is good and bad it like whether you have terrible terrible characters on the good side our brains can't help but equate good and bad there is mm -hmm. evil and good because that is how stories have been told and if you want yep. a satisfying ending nine times out of ten that satisfactory ending comes with the protagonist slash good guy winning mm -hmm. which means that the antagonist 
slash bad guy has to lose. Yeah. Um, yep. And it's hard. So even if it's like we love the villains, the villain like Haley, we love Haley, but the satisfying ending would be for her to be stra- to be dragged out onto the streets, streets and literally torn limb from limb. Yeah. Like it, it, or guillotined. Like that would have been a satisfying ending. Yep. And, uh, you have to be willing to give that up to the masses. I know with Naomi, a satisfying ending for like Damien or Payne would have been for, um, you know, Ludo to kill him or yeah. other characters whom he had Or like, who was, who was the other character? There was another character too that we had talked about. Oh, I can't remember who it was, but somebody else that Damien had super wronged. Yeah, exactly. Kill. Yeah. Um, I mean, and there was also talk of, of, of uh piero killing him um, oh yeah 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 that would be another good one um, because then because then it would satisfy a a whole triangle that was happening but victims of the bad guy Mm -hmm. killing the character and these are all things that are satisfying and all things that you as the villain writer or as the person whose character is dying don't get to control in order to write the most satisfying ending. Yep. This doesn't happen as much in one-on-one because you have a lot more control and a lot less pieces to spread around. Yeah, because you typically um, have just yeah. two main characters and that's really it in a one-on-one. Yeah, and and if you're can if you've built a whole world one-on-one, then you can you can juggle that and, and figure that out. And hell, you could even have some of your characters kill your character. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> there, even then, you get to remain in control. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to group dynamic, writing the most satisfying, the most satisfying ending to both the people that you owe plots to, as well as the entire group dynamic, is an incredibly important part about killing off your character. And if you are not willing to do either of those, then you should not be p- killing off your character. No. In my and then, yep. so I think we've talked, I want to switch gears a little bit because we have the whole episode on villains. So I don't want to hammer this point yeah. too much. Yeah. But when we, when, what about killing, um, you know, one of the good guys? So typically this will happen like in the middle of the role play, like before the ending or maybe yeah. towards, towards the end as like, you know, a victim of the circumstance. And I feel like what, what makes a really good, um, you know, narrative death for a, for somebody that's more on the protagonist side of things is as a martyr right is as somebody that that motivates and i know that there's like a lot of really dangerous tropes for this where sometimes characters get created just to be the martyr and nothing else and that causes all kinds of like those are not very good not very good tropes um you know but uh there's a reason they keep happening there's a reason they keep happening it's because when you've got somebody on the protagonist side what feels satisfying about them dying is for them to spur on other protagonists in the stories action to to reach the ending um so i think when it when if you've got a protagonist that you want to kill off i think instead of instead of thinking about it from the perspective like we talked about with the villain with everyone being satisfied think about how can my character either push more towards the the yeah. goal of the ending or how can my character's death um be a roadblock for the protagonists reaching the ending Right. Yeah. So those yep. two things, I think, are what needs to be considered when we're talking about um, a protagonist's death or a hero character's cool. death. It just boils down to there needs to be an impact. There yeah. needs to be a yep. reason why. Which is why when we as mods, when you petition to kill off a character, quote unquote, like we very rarely say no, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, because most a lot of times also there's like there's out of character reasons people want to kill off a character yeah, and like it gets complicated. So sometimes I say yes to bad endings because... I understand other dynamics that are going on. And at the end of the day, my most important thing is for everybody to be happy and have fun, not always to tell the best story. Like, I know that sounds counterintuitive. A lot of times my goal is to tell the best story, but most of the time my goal is to make sure all my players, they're happy, you know? So sometimes I do sacrifice the story for that, for sure. If we weren't real people and just robots, we would be 100% concerned about the best story. But the reality is is that we are all grown adults living our adult lives where shit happens, especially in the middle of a pandemic. Uh-huh. Election year. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it, it's like my de- my death with Unadi Hashiko. That actually now that actually would have created a reason for the Hashiko clan to come out of their little hole and actually seek vengeance against the Black Light clan. Yeah. To, and it would have led into a era of war 
that be among the within the whole continent. So it technically would have been a world war, where even the human civilizations that were like we're done with the clans, we don't want to be a part of this anymore, would have have to been brought back in because of this sheer scale of it. Basically, like uh, in World War II, where uh, J- Japan bombed bombed Pearl Harbor be- and brought the U.S. into the into the war, it would have been a similar situation there. Like a narrative so, reason for the next thing to happen. Exactly. Yeah. So that death would have served a purpose. Where, whereas, let's say, um, in where, yeah, I, I got bored of Runati re- towards the middle of the roleplay far before this point. And I actually wrote out several literary ideas about how he could die, such as he actually dying from can- from his cancer. But unfortunately, he we couldn't really do that because of everything going on. And that ultimately wouldn't have served a purpose for the story. It would have just been me killing the character because I got bored with him. Yep. Yeah. Thumper, you're cracking so- me up. <laughs> i'm just watching what's going on in the chat right now you know once you join the stream you can't leave like that's the rules God. <laughs> anyway yeah absolutely i think when it comes to character death like if when you're planning that character death it's it's so important to think about like what does this mean like what does this mean for me what does this mean for the narrative because because it's hard like we talked in the beginning about all of the different things that um emotionally and psychologically go into it and the struggles with it and da da da, da and all this stuff and I, and I think that part of what can make you feel okay with it and overcome some of those struggles is knowing how like cool or badass or how amazing to the narrative that death is going to be right and so you can kind of build that up as a goal in your mind of something that you're excited for and then it becomes so much easier to get past all of the other like muck that's going on in your head that's stopping you from actually going through with the character death yes and i yeah the you will have more of an impact in death what is a successful arc story to me is personally that your character will have more of an impact in death than it did in in its life, quote unquote, within the RP. Yeah. Because death, death, like in real life, reaches really far. Mm-hmm. And it yep. does. It can be that martyr. It can be that roadblock. It can be, you know, a, a joyous celebration for the, for the villains and a terrible loss for the good guys. But that could then spark some other things or other plots that no one had any idea about Mm -hmm. Um, being able to write that sort of plot is amazing yeah i encourage everybody to do it it is hard death and goodbyes are hard but you know what sometimes you just gotta let it go it's definitely (laughs) something worth trying if you've never Um, if you've done it never done it before i recommend um experiencing it at, at least once yes and um and and do it for the most impact because the more care and consideration you take into killing off that character for the best use of others the more like satisfaction you will get a hundred percent even if you're bored writing the character even if you've lost muse even if you don't want to write this plot line if you take the time and care i promise you you will care about this i'm not saying that it will spark you wanting to write that character forever but it will make you care at least about that character. Mm-hmm. And the wonderful thing is, is that they're they're just characters, right? So it's they can come back in another role play in the future. Absolutely. Like they don't have to they don't have to be gone forever. And I and I think um, and I think that's what I'd want to to make sure that that we also say. And I know Jane had a good question on this, and thank you for writing that down, Landon, because I completely forgot what her question was, but I know it was related to this. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's the thing about about endings in a role play, just like in any kind of story. All it really does is open up a gateway for the next beginning. That's all it really does. Like you never have to stop writing and creating. It's 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 yep. forever. Also, like what Thumper just said. Sorry, it just like got me. I won't be able to kill someone in this iteration. That's fine. None of us are going to. Yeah. <laughs> like, <let's be> honest. <laughs> yeah. No one. No one's really touched the RP. It's fine. But 
I mean, it's my. I mean, it's my fault. RP with you guys. Oh, uh, <laughs> so. you should join the next one. We're probably gonna yeah. launch it. Uh, we're probably gonna start taking applications sometime in December and launch it officially in January. You should join. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see about yeah. it. It might. It might actually spark my interest back in, and uh, liter and literary role play. So it, that'd be nice to get back into. So, um, Thump, but to finish Thumper's thing, I need to make everyone very sad again. That's the other thing, too. I, as a writer... Oh, it's so fun! I, as a writer, like to make real humans feel big emotions about fake humans. Is there, is there nothing better? Is there nothing better than when you write that post and then all of a sudden the chat or your DMs just, like... Like you see, Blow you up. have that like you have that explosion like when you know someone read it and then like somebody else is like what 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 and then they're like you have to go read this here and then they they go read it and then they explode and it's just like it's still beautiful it's still beautiful. I can count, I can count three. Ple I can only count three things that are more pleasurable than that feeling, and two of them I'm not allowed to say on. <laughs> 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 so, so this is i mean i basically what land is saying and i totally endorse it in in many ways in many ways um better than sex right <laughs> this is definitely this is definitely one of those feelings that falls under that type of category it feels so good you put in so much work and then that payoff is just like mm, it just feels I so good you, it is worth it. Um, <laughs> but I also know Eric is going to have to leave us here in a minute or two. Yes, um, unfortunately I am. I, before we do that, and I know that you might have to cut out, so please say goodbye before you cut out, but I do want to get back to Jane's question. Yeah, um, um, so before, gonna... yeah, it was really, really, really quick, since I know, Eric, you, you probably have to drop off in a second. Um, before we get to Jane's question, I just want to okay. do, like, um, either, Eric, if you have a closing thought, or if you want to um, to shill for a minute, tell people where to find you, that sort of thing, if you could just take a couple minutes to do that, because I know you're logging off, like, any minute. Yeah, I got, yeah, like, three minutes before I I have to get out of here and get and get going to work. Um, a, a closing thought would ultimately be that endings in role-playing are, are never a bad thing. Yes, it can, it can feel like, oh my god, why is everything ending? But ultimately, it can actually progress the story even more than just continuing that thread or continue or just trying to make somebody else happy. And if or if the role play is ending, you probably have developed a lot of amazing friends from it. Yeah. Even be even from just role playing and un realizing, hey, this is something even more than I thought it was. So don't be afraid of endings. They are a wonderful thing and can even bring progress. Yes, 100%. Okay. Yeah, so, and of course, if you want to find me, um, uh, I have the, we are linked on <laughs> Benerlis is linked on Karen's Discord. Feel free to join us. We're not 18 plus, but we're we're open to everybody. We're just a chill, fun group that likes to mess around and and just hang out. So that's generally what what it is. Or or uh, you can or of course you can just friend me on Discord. I'm usually open to talking to people, so feel free to do that. Yep, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Eric. I um, always love having you on and um, and have fun at work as much as you can, right? Because it's work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would try. <laughs> I might also, get a boring position today, so. <laughs> but also congratulations on making it four days in a row. That's yes, awesome. that's amazing. Uh, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, Eric, right. We, will, we will talk to you in the future, I'm sure. Thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. All right. Love you guys. You too. All right, bye. bye. Yeah, Thumper, you can um, you can totally name one of the pinatas if you want. Let me know. Um, let you put a name in there and let me know which one. I'll go ahead and do it. Um, and thank you so much for following Demonic. Yes, this is um, this is my stream, and we play chill games and have uh, conversations about role play with my friends. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, okay, so with all of that, uh, that little segue there. Yeah, Landon, um, get us into Jane's question. So Jane earlier asked. Does any part of the ending of last ser for server story influence the next server story? 
Since you know a lot of the group will probably join, do their play styles ever influence ideas? Or is the story itself including motifs or allusions to the uh, allusions to the last story? Okay, so, so. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, this role play is set up the way that it's set up because y'all asked for a mob role play. Um, yep. Now there was some things that I didn't I didn't do quite right, which um, a little here's a little a little shout out promo on Thursday's stream. What I'm going to be doing is actually doing the the bones setup of the Discord server because I want to update my Discord server videos because those are like over a year old now. So I want to show you all my whole process for creating servers right now as it exists with everything that I've learned in the past year. So um, so during that, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things that I did wrong in the previous role play that caused me to ultimately get bored and kind of abandon the story and then how I'm going to change that in the next role play. So there's, I'm not gonna reveal the plot, I'm not gonna reveal um, the setting, except there will be clues because I'm gonna be creating the server. So you'll see some clues, right? You'll see the name of the role play. Um, but, but mostly what I'm gonna be talking about in addition to like the actual Discord setup. So in the spots where I'm just like clicking and typing and I don't have anything specifically to say, I'm gonna talk about a few of the things that, that I did wrong that I wanna do differently in the next role play so okay. um so go ahead and uh so go ahead and and join that stream if you are interested in in some specifics but the answer to your question is a resounding yes there are elements from the previous role play i want a version in the next role play hold on i need to i need to acknowledge this thumper knows no she doesn't <laughs> oh, know okay. oh, nobody knows you. oh i was like the mods don't know, guys. This is how this is how taught, like locked, slipped. Karen has been <laughs> stream for clues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody knows. It's all. It's just. It's just. Um. It's just. I oh, want to say. She said, I want to know what's next. I oh. Know I know what we're doing next. No, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Only I know. <laughs> well, because this is the thing. This is the thing. I get ambitious, right? I get ambitious. And so I have a whole process, which I've made videos on, um, world building videos and things like that on, y'all can find on my channel. Um, I have this whole process where like I make it and I proofread it and redo it and redo it a whole bunch of times. And then I show it to like just a few friends that have role played with me before and, and they put their spin on it and then build a bunch of stuff and build a bunch of stuff. And then what I'll do is invite the people from the previous role play, yeah. which would Thumper, you would be in that group, right? And what I will task you guys with is like the other things that need to be created, like please proofread all of our stuff, find the stuff that that the small group didn't find because there's still stuff that's going to be too ambitious and not work and be confusing, you know? Um, so you'll, Thumper, you'll be a part of that whole process. And from there, we take suggestions, like we take suggestions and mm -hmm. Karen always takes suggestions and mm -hmm. she frankly is always listening too. Yeah, always. So, um, a, a huge one is, oh, in Magic Reborn, which is the RP we had before Atlantis, we built all of the, like, not the religion, but the traditions, the yeah. way that the plan worked, the government. All of that was built by us. Um, and, and including people who came in from um, Yinsed. Sorry. Yeah. I to remember no, you're right. That. You're right. Yeah, it's Yinsed. <laughs> Yinsed was the previous Yinsed, one. Um, it, it came in from Yinsed and, and, and developed that as well. Um, we, like Karen said, we, uh, we have Atlantis because we asked for a mob RP. We, yeah, we a whole bunch, a whole bunch of people came to me and was like, we really want to do a mob RP, Karen. I, I was like, I've never run one before. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to need a lot of help, but I will set it up if that's what y'all want. And, and there were, and it's a learning process too, because like, we don't like, we don't know how to run things. Karen doesn't know, isn't ev great at everything. Although yeah. she's great at most things. Oh, thank you. Uh, but, but definitely not everything. <laughs> but it's a learning process, right? And of course we learn from that. And we also, in our writing, we are cheeky little fuckers, mm -hmm. which means we also like to hint back to things. So I'm oh, sure, oh, I know oh, for oh, a fact, oh, Phoebe had oh, in this Atlantis, yeah. in this rendition of her, oh. had a... Yeah. dream about the magic born version of herself I she did in there. it was so but it was like, so funny of course we allude to it and we frankly encourage that kind of stuff because it's kind of like a where's waldo now we don't want the entire plot obviously being back to alluding to things um but a hundred percent we have that sort of in in mind when we build things out yeah, I mean, I, I already love... know. I already know I'm going to ask Vi, like, if she can make a version of Mart Mart. 
you know, yeah. for the next oh, role play. Oh, like that's happening because I want Mart Mart again. <laughs> yes. And I would love if we if we had something like that. Like I think that we are to the point that we could do that, or we would have a consistent thing. Um through all of our RPs that like if, if it's Mart Mart then it's Mart Mart. Yeah. Um, and that for the rest of time we have these little little things that happen, I think is extremely important with how we build the RP. Yeah, I mean the, the reason why the Fight Club is is named um First Blood in in this in yeah. this role play um is because there was um a previous there was the previous role play called First Blood, right? We've we've talked yeah. about it during this this stream. Oh. Pixie dust. I know, obviously, we have pixies and dust being a drug, but that drug came around because we had fairy dust in Yinset. Yep. Like um, the reason, the reason why pixie dust. Yeah, part of the reason. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 had the same effects as that did. So that was like obviously part of it. Um, I Sasha came up with a huge amount of it, but we definitely were like, oh, this is really alluding to something that we've already created. So of course we have those like alludes. Um, mm -hmm. We have. I know that a lot of what Karen builds also is inspired off of real life or not, not real life, but like. It's more um, like about what I feel like is important yeah. to express artistically in some way. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of times that is real life. <laughs> yeah. It's just super stressful. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I, of course that happens. And that's, I also think is what makes it easier for things to end. Mm -hmm. right is if it doesn't feel like it really ended we all acknowledge that it existed and we make kind of a joke out of it or mm -hmm. we or we allude to things that make us warm and fuzzy inside or um anything like that like it, it 100 percent happens mm -hmm. and i think mm -hmm. it's a great way to cope with it too that if you if you have these inside jokes quote unquote with your community continue to make them yeah, like I see this a lot in tabletop um, games too. People will demand, like, they'll be like, we want a fantasy waffle house. We want our characters to go go to fantasy um, Walmart. Like, you know, and it just, it thing, like stuff like that, like having things that you can relate to um, from game to game and that, that you all find fun and silly, um, I think is a really important part of um of kind of keeping that community feel instead of it being like a group of people that are that are together just for the role play truly feeling like a community yes yeah so yes 100 percent um to your question jane in a lot a lot of ways and keep on keeping on like with it like jane come back please make things happen <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the thing oh yeah <laughs> Um, Fantasy Costco. Oh my god. <laughs> Landon, please make me an Arthur. Oh yeah. I don't know if you saw some of these messages um in the cafe, Landon, but Jane says she oh. needs she needs a starting point. So we have to remake um an Arthur skeleton. So you're gonna get tasked with that. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay, sweet. Me liking to make skeletons of characters? Hell yeah, please give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um yeah so okay. shall we change gears yeah um anything else is there anything else we want to say on endings i feel like i got out everything i wanted to say i mean this seems like the end yeah the end of the <laughs> ending episode <laughs> okay no, I think, um i think just that go for it like and like pickle said he said it so well Nothing in RP comes bad. Nothing bad comes from an ending. Mm -hmm. Do it with purpose. Do it with reason. If that reason is that you're bored and you need to move on, that's valid. Mm -hmm. But especially when it comes to like ending characters, end for impact. Mm -hmm. If you are, the goal here, at least for me, for RPing is to make connections and to also make people feel things. <laughs> and even if that's just myself feeling something or my partner feeling yeah. something, make them feel something with endings. Endings yeah. are, a, we're already an emotional and volatile time. Um, you can do so much with it. Yeah. I love that. So, yeah. Okay. So I'll save the game and, um, and if you could paste the article into oh, the yeah. chat, please. Let me, let me find it very quickly. Um, yes, it's good news time. 
good, good news, news time. Good news. Sorry, I'm not a very good singer. Or we'd have like little jingles or things for you know each of the segments, but that's just that's just not my that's just not my bag. I can't do it. <laughs> but I have ambitions. I feel like if I was good at singing, I could. <clears throat> All right. So um, here's the here's the link. Okay. So here we go. Man gets engaged to a woman he traveled 4,000 miles to meet after she liked a photo of his chubby cat. <gasps> oh! I have, I have a little beef with this one. What? Not really that much beef. But I saw a TikTok last night because I don't know if you guys are on TikTok, but it's currently what they're calling Nuance November on TikTok. Oh. Which basically means people say their opinions without any nuance. And someone came for cats. What? And I just couldn't deal with it. Rude. <laughs> Oh my they gosh. Like, cats are like, sociopaths. And then I was like, well, we're all so. Oh, cats are sociopaths because they only show affection because they want food. And I was like, yeah, well, then we all are sociopaths. I mean, big because same. Sure we all <laughs> only show affection because we want food. I don't know if I've ever said so on stream, but real talk, <laughs> the reason why I ended up marrying my husband, like the for real like reason, is because in one of our first dates, I think this was like either, this was like maybe date number two. He cooked me um, pork chops and I don't like pork chops, but his were actually good. And I was like super impressed. And so like I kept going to see him. <laughs> and if, if, if it weren't for those pork chops, I probably would not have continued in those early stages because I was I was in quite a wild child stage at that moment. <laughs> Without being cynical, <laughs> um, we, <laughs> we get something out of the relationships we have. And if it just so happens that you get lo like affection and physical touch from someone and that makes you happy and makes you love them and a cat gets food from someone and that makes them love them and sh show physical affection, it's all the same thing. You it's know what? My cat loves me. I don't, it's not, it's not, tra it's not purely transactional. My cat does not. love me. You don't know what you're talking about, cat haters. So anyway, <laughs> I thought it was cool that this, that this girl liked a photo of this guy's chubby cat and then he was willing to travel 4,000 miles to meet oh, her oh look at them together it's oh, just look. a happy little story what this look this is a beautiful like winter aesthetic looking picture I love this and this is their their each of their kitty cats I assume this yeah. is the one that um that she saw the picture of and and clicked yeah. like and then I guess this is her kitty cat I love this um we have we have two cats of course and we have the dog and um and i and i i love my animals i love my animals i don't understand people that are like you know oh i have i like dogs but i don't like cats like i don't know the truth is they're really not that different like that's the truth there are small differences but there's not a huge a lot, a lot amount of differences between cats and dogs like that's the tea dogs need more cats. they do and i'm in a place where i'm like you know what i need something that needs me just a little bit but not too much and that's perfect because that's a cat. <laughs> Thumper, I love that group. Came for the cat, stayed for the cat dads. Hell yeah. <laughs> you can drop a cat, but you have to set dogs down gently. Oh, yeah, that's a great metaphorical way to say it. Um, and for, for you, you, most of y'all probably know, but my dog is elderly at this point, so she does take a lot of time and effort. But I love her. It's okay. The cats definitely don't take nearly as much time and effort. And um, and they're very clear when they want attention. But the, the dog, um, she just wants attention all the time, you know. <laughs> and I have a cat who just wants attention all the fucking time. Yeah, Queen is like that too. Like she and she's but, so good at meowing. Oh gosh. But you know what? I go and I am I am having a good cry because it's a hard day and he is the first little cat to mm -hmm. just like not even demand anything from me, just cuddle up with me because he knows I need it. Yep. Yep. And that's love people. Yep. Anyway. Uh one hundred percent Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> the many screams of the babby. Yes, that is how my my queen is. She is a screamer. <laughs> I love this. What a cute little article. Meeting and bonding over kitty cats. Um, the internet loves cats. Uh, I love cats. I get it. Um, the definitely, it's definitely good like b brain bleach to just watch cat videos, right? That's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let's end this thing. Let's end this ending stream. Endings, endings, endings. Endings okay. on endings on endings. <laughs> endings and endings and endings. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you want to find me because you think I'm funny, I have an Instagram. Um, sometimes I use it. <laughs> <laughs> when you do use it, it's really good. 
it's typically pretty good. I sometimes have a TikTok too, but you just have to find me on there. It's not that hard. Um, okay, I'll have to actually re-download TikTok because my current use of TikTok is really just Kendra sending me TikToks every day. So far, yeah, I mean that too. So far, it's really just been me crying and also me, oh, there's this woman who is doing enemies to lovers, like Ooh. acting challenges. And oh. you know me. So <laughs> put on the fake British accent and pretend to be a princess. It, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's, so you can follow me there. Land in Maine on all of those. Um, and yeah, that's all I got for you. Okay, so here's um, all the places you can find me. We have two streams that we do. This one that you're watching right now is called Interstage Window. It's where we play, you know, some chill games and have conversations with friends about role play or other like, you know, internet related things because I truly believe that the best way that y'all are going to become the best role players that you want to be is not to just hear from me, but to hear from other people too. So this is my vehicle for um, doing that and exposing you guys to some other um uh, thoughts and, and conversations and things like that. We also have another Twitch stream that happens on Thursday. That one's called Artistic License. Uh, it's Thursday at around 6.30-ish Eastern, and um, that is my one where we do whatever the hell I want. So next week, we are going to be making a Discord server. We're going to make it for the new role play. And the, the point of this, as far as the stream goes, um, is because I made those videos about how to make a roleplay Discord server like so long ago, like so freaking long ago, and they need a redo. So we're going to do that. Um, but for you guys, I'm sure what you're going to be doing is hunting for clues the whole time, which that's valid yeah. too. Like you're welcome to come I, and do that. <laughs> I will be blowing up your Discord, uh, Discord. No, actually, probably not the DM, probably the group server. Yeah. And just being like, was this a hint? The letter R is capitalized. Is that a hint? Put it, come into the Twitch and put it in the Twitch chat. I know that, that sometimes, um, the stream is, is difficult for you. Yeah. Um, but, uh, awesome. but yeah, if you're able to, um, that would be yeah. awesome. Okay. So, uh, yes. Yes. So then the other place, the other main place that you can find me is on YouTube. Uh, I have a show on there called Spare Room, which is goes up every Wednesday at 2 p.m. That is my scripted show. So it's more like discreet, like role play help topics. Uh, all of this, by the way, is all down in the about section of the of the Twitch. And then um, you can follow me on Twitter at It's Karen Terry. For that, it's mostly advertising, but I do actually post content there. Hot takes go go there. Um, random thoughts. For example, uh, Final Fantasy. I was playing that this morning, and it went down for five whole minutes, and it was an absolute tragedy. So that I had to go on my Twitter. Um, replies <laughs> from Landon can also be found. Yes, Landon's Twitter is uh, is a Karen Stan account. So just look at my likes, and you'll find her. <laughs> or look at the likes on my tweets, and you'll find her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, there's my Discord server. If you thought it was such cool, it was so so cool that Eric joined us today. Um, the way that you can become one of the cast members like Eric is, is both to come to the live streams like you guys that are listening are doing right now um, on YouTube. Of course, you're not. This is in the past for you. But then you do that and then also be in the Discord server. So those are the two things that you need to do if you are interested in being a cast member and potentially joining these conversations in the future. Um, and uh, and then, of course, I have all, all the things like I'm affiliate on Twitch. So if you want to give me money, you can do that all the different ways. There's tips down there. There's cheers. There's the subscriptions. And my Patreon is also down there if you are interested in um, in supporting what I do. And uh, and that's it. That's all the things. That's that's it. OK, thank you guys so much for joining us today for the ending stream. And we will be back next weekend with something fun. I don't know what yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing. Don't yeah. forget to be awesome. Yeah, and uh, don't forget to make it a great day. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. See you later.